the Hans Painting Party. This ain't your daddy's painting class. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mary Houlihan. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> Welcome to Mary Houlihan's painting party. That's right, it's Thursday, currently. <laughs> December 8th. <laughs> At 9 p.m. Eastern. <laughs> psych! Psych! Oh my god, you guys should have seen your faces. You guys should have seen your faces. You were like... Oh, this is filmed live. Wrong. Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's daytime. It's daytime. And it's Tuesday. Let's see. We got some window action. Oh, we got... See, it's, it's daytime. We got daytime tree. Daytime sky. More tree. The truth is, you guys, this is the first ever pre-filmed episode because I have to go see Nick Nanny's big show at Union Hall. So that's what I'm doing right now. You gotta support your besties when they put on a big show at Union Hall. Everyone knows this. So I've never done, we've never done a pre-filmed at before. I was texting with uh, Alex Alice! <laughs> I was texting with Alice and Forrest. And I was saying, you know, I think I want to do something creative. I don't just want to, like, take the week off. I want to, I don't know, make a clip show, make, like, a YouTube playlist or something. And I had all these ideas. I was thinking... Okay, so you guys know that Alfred Hitchcock show? Alfred Hitchcock Presents, I guess. And I guess it's kind of like uh, Twilight Zone. Just like weird stories presented by him. Thus, it's called Al Alfred Hitchcock Presents. And it starts with the theme song. You know, spooky song. I think I'm maybe filming something like that in my cabin. And then presenting some um, pre-filmed sketches or maybe just like weird found footage. Um, and then coming back in between clips and yeah, I guess almost like Welcome to Wienerville. Is that what that show is called? So, you know, they'd have clips. They'd play Batfink and old cartoons. And then it'd come back to the host. It's also like Kablam. They got those two people hosting it. Um, so, yeah, I was thinking maybe doing something like that. Pre-filming myself being like... Get ready for this next next clip. Wow, that sure was a good clip, right? <laughs> and I still really like that idea. I think I would like to do that. But I've been working on all these paintings from Etsy that people have been buying as Xmas presents. And so I've been working on those, and I was sitting, I was working on this one, and I thought, you know what, why don't I just film this? Why don't I just film this? And another thing that I was saying a couple weeks ago, maybe it was when Claire was on, and before the show we were talking about what I paint, and I was saying, you know, usually I like to do like a fast 
like a, like that one of the dog, or where's that other one? That one of the birds up there. It's like a fast thing completed in an hour. Because some of these things that people have purchased and spent their good money on, when I'm working on these, I'm very like you know like very careful and um, you know really honed in and during the live show you know I like to be chatting I like to be chatting and uh, live commenting and stuff so I get scared that I'll mess up someone's painting but this pre-filmed feels like less uh it feels more comfortable to work on a painting that i you know want to do a really careful good job on because i don't know when you're alone you're kind of talking to yourself <laughs> yeah i'm more so talking to myself than having a conversation and trying to be witty and trying to uh I don't know. Do you get what I mean? Maybe. Oh, I should put on background music. So we usually play the music that Jonah sent us two years ago. By the way, submit music to us. I love the Jonah music, but I want to hear other stuff too. So in the time... They didn't have this when we started the show, but StreamYard, the site that we use, uh, they've added a background music function. So I'm going to check some of these out. They have acoustic cinematic. Sounds boring, but let's see. This is actually not as bad as I thought it would be. This is pretty cool. Yes. Okay. All right. Wow. I feel like an MC. You know, like the, the old dance hall kind, maybe dropping the beats. And then the MC host is like, down to left, uh, <laughs> booyakasha. That's what I feel like right now. With this amazing dance pop mix.
Thursdays when we do this show. It's nighttime. It's dark outside. Now, he filming this. Makes me think, oh, maybe it would be cool to do it. To do like a daytime thing. And walk around the neighborhood. Show you all my weird neighbors' houses. <laughs> weird uh, holiday decorations. I like the idea of this Twitch channel doing more than just the live painting party on Thursdays. Some more kinds of programming. Film stuff, clip show stuff. I really want to watch The Irishman and screen share my like reaction. The Irishman reaction bid, three hours long. That's what I want to do. I make no bones about it. I like watching uh, stuff like that. I guess it feels like a little silly for some reason to admit that I like that. I guess because I've been doing comedy so long and like the industry is competitive, people are competitive with each other, and so I feel like to say, oh, I'm kind of, I like watching YouTubers. I'm thinking about becoming a YouTuber. That's like less uh, cool or less high status as like, you know, I'm getting my own TV show on a Thanks guys, I like, I like watching boring YouTube videos. I've said many times on the show before, I love TikToks of people cleaning. 
and I'll admit it, I've watched, I've watched many a YouTube video where it's a story time and it's like the most boring story you've ever heard in your fucking life, but you keep watching and you see the time elapsed and it's like, I've been watching this person talk about going, <laughs> going to a nose job consultation and not being sure if they want to do it but they and that and there was traffic on the way like the most boring nothing of a story and i'll just be like i like watching them talk one youtuber i watch sometimes her name is it's blitz and she does asmr vids Sometimes she does, uh, she ventures into YouTube, well, like, you know, talking to Cam about, um, um, you know, talking like this, Just off the top of the dome. Thinking aloud. I also think there's something about how those types of videos are like low energy and relaxing. That it also feels kind of embarrassing to talk about liking them because it's like, instead of watching a critically acclaimed uh, water cooler TV show, you're like, I'm stressed and watching this person talk about um, their uh, night cream routine makes Is it? Maybe I'm just revealing myself to be very self-critical. I think I am self-critical. And so that's kind of why I like this kind of stuff, the streaming and long form boring stuff because really giving yourself permission to not be entertaining. <laughs> it's funny because like, I feel like I shouldn't say that because I do want people to watch and so you shouldn't say, this isn't entertaining. You know, this isn't a car chase. You're watching a girl paint. A girl paint and talk to herself. It's not really high octane. That's not speed. I'm not like performing a pre written bit. I'm more just like showing a thing that I'm talented at or a thing that relaxes me and that maybe. I think other people might find relaxing. And um, without fear of, or with fear of, but embracing the fear of being cringe. And I think there's something freeing and nice about that. Because, like, So I feel like ultimately the point of doing comedy or anything creative 
for me it kind of feels like someone might be having a bad day and I would like to maybe say something stupid as hell on stage that makes them laugh and go oh right like whatever I was stressing out about is like nonsense the world is <laughs> But, you know, I gotta be real with you guys. I gotta be real with you guys. Part of me does think, ooh, I wanna be one of those. How do you be one of those people who just gets a zillion million subscribers and then they just like put up ads and make money? I admit, that's part of the appeal. But it seems sort of like a. Like. People who do that, they of course must have like strategy and a plan. Like as long as it's random. But some of it is lightning in the bottle, random. The type of things that take off. And so it doesn't feel like something to aspire to or hope for. Or just like, uh, oh, if this took off and I got a million billion viewers, and it didn't work and just made ad revenue, that would be clutch. That would be clutch. A while ago on the show, maybe like a year ago, maybe more, I had on this guest, a YouTuber that I like. Joe Scott, he makes like science and cartoon things. And I have no idea what he makes, but he does ads and he has a Patreon. And his videos are very entertaining. And he, you know, because the videos generate income, he can afford to hire editors and, you know, aim higher, make better content. Treat it, you know, treat it like a, like a real show, like a TV show, but not just like a, oh, I'm fucking around. I feel like that's how like Patreon uh, podcaster <laughs> culture is. Like, uh, not all of them. But many people are earnest and cool. I guess I mean more like a uh, like Come Town or what are the other ones? Oh. <laughs> 
Gestapo. To be fair, it's not like I listen to those, but they have the reputation of being like, dudes just chilling and being like, you can't believe you make all this money for just chilling. You know, like, so Joe Scott, I admire that he, you know, has lucked into having a fan base or have, being a quote unquote YouTuber. But he like elevates the show and doesn't own it in. Like the show gets more technically advanced and uh, better research, more research as the show goes on over time. And like We're cooking with gas. Woo! It's Christmas time, and I can't lie, I like it. I like holidays, I like decorating, I like Christmas music. I don't understand at all the, uh, Mm, people's beef with Christmas music. I just feel like there's so much uh, good Christmas music out there. Or like... Okay, Spotify sucks, anti-capitalism, etc. But you could go on Spotify and you could find a Christmas music playlist for like... whatever your interest is. You could, uh... Like, I like to listen to these weird, like eccentric one of the, uh, the numero group that put out a spotify playlist called eccentric snow that was like a bunch of weird like uh, funk, oldies country kind of like a weirdo obscure for lack of a better term, hipster music. You know, kind of music I like. That's Christmas theme. Stuff that you... They have some big hits on it, but there's some stuff that you just would never have heard. Ooh. Like a time machine. To, uh... Weird. Failed. National Music Studio of the 1960s and hearing the Christmas songs that they were putting out that never became hits. I think that kind of thing is quite interesting and fun. There's also punk Christmas songs, of course. There's ironic. <laughs> you know, if, if you want to be anti-cap and cranky, which of course I want to do also uh, much of the time. Sorry. I say sorry because it's Debbie that we're. How to be revolutionary without being a bummer? It's so hard. So there's that pink song. Put 
Get thongs. Get that. I don't know. You get it. I mean, to be fair, I get if you work in retail and you're listening to like the same shitty uh, like chain store approved mix of the same 30 songs over and over. By all means, be my guest and just like Christmas music. But no one else should have an excuse to make a whole thing of this like in Christmas music unless your whole family died on Xmas. I think that would also be fair to find Christmas music triggering and not enjoy it. But besides those two excuses, I can hardly think of an excuse that would justify being such a crank and not listening to Christmas music. So as I said earlier, the reason this is pretty filmed is because Nick Manny, one of my besties, is doing like a big one-man show tonight and I know it's important to him and I wanted to go see it. or something and so if you tell yourself if you're saying if you catch yourself thinking oh I'm so nervous you can stop yourself in your tracks and say actually I'm so excited and it doesn't feel like you're lying to yourself you're sort of like hmm I guess actually I am I do have like excitement and I have nervous energy but it's not necessarily it doesn't have to be a negative thing to have this excitement and nervous energy. I've been having nervous energy. Um, so I have a little bit of social anxiety, to be honest. And so I'm... Sometimes I catch myself thinking, Ooh, there's going to be a bunch of people there, and people are going to you know, talk to me, and like, better say something interesting. Or, uh, oh, what if someone is mean to me? Sometimes comedians are very mean. Uh, yeah, I've been thinking about that. Like, dreading having a social interaction that will make me feel bad. I've been, like, mentally preparing for that. And then telling myself, you know... No, just focus on, I'm excited to see my friend's show. Don't go into like a anxiety spiral about it. Being so real, right? What do we think, five people tuned in? <laughs> Honestly, I guess I would like to know for those of you to watch the stream and I hope to watch the stream and chat with each other. I hope it's still fun even though it's not live. I, I would love to hear some feedback about like, I don't know, maybe like, you know what Mayor, I liked what you are saying about wanting to do some free films. Here's what I think would be good, you know, constructive criticism what you think works, what you think maybe we should do instead, or maybe like the, you know, I've always thought it would be cool to do a pre-filmed live stream of blah blah blah. I'd love to hear those ideas. Maybe even collabs, got a collab idea. 
Let me know. I'm just a regular Joe. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. The contact email is Mary Houlihan, XOXO at gmail.com. Let's see. So I'm just recording this by myself. If you can tell. Because, like, if Forrest was live producing this, I would be chatting back and forth with him, prob. So now I'm going to do some Forrest stuff. Let's see, let's see. Cute. <laughs> um, cute. That's the show email. Do you have any uh, suggestions? Feel free to email. So I, the other day, I deactivated my social media. I'm gonna give that a try. As you may know, I did forest my logins. And so I thought that would help look at social media less. You know, well, if, if I have to make a promo thing, you can just post it. But I don't know, it didn't really take away the urge to check it. Firestone doesn't have Twitter. Sometimes she tries getting rid of this or that. Deactivating and reactivating. Um, yeah, she's a person that I look up to. Yeah, the 
see other people who aren't on social media and aren't having like a freak out over like, oh, am I missing out for not being on social media? And they're like, no, this is right. I don't like being on it, so I'm not going to use it. Try to think of people like that. Emmy Blotnick, she's another one. But it's tough. I feel like they, I don't know, they get more uh, showbiz work though. Like I rely more on, uh, you know, DIY direct interaction with fans. So yeah, that's one of the things that makes me go, well, maybe I need social media because you know, it's the tool that I have. or not like it, sound off in the comments. of my desk so this can't get any closer in I guess I could move the stuff around on my desk and bring the painting closer to the camera I'm find some other kind of tripod situation it would be nice like uh, painting and talking to yourself for an hour isn't that like neurotic <laughs> is that just like a definition of neurotic and who the fuck wants to watch that or maybe that's an ego thing who wants to admit that they're neurotic <laughs> instead of like cool as a cucumber all the time That's it's Jonah Hill doing a doc with his therapist. And as someone who has not been able to find a good therapist in many, 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 many months, a year even, and has to rely on journaling and uh, vicariously getting tips from friends be a fair therapist. 
probably the best form of therapy I've had in the past year. It's just watching this movie and like taking notes. You know, I'm, I'm squeezing the juice out of this Stutz movie trying to get something valuable out of it. I'm sure I know someone who has his contact info. I wonder if it would be nice to send him an email saying, hey, I got depression. My therapist isn't taking clients anymore. I found your movie quite helpful. I think that would make him feel good to read stuff like that. But uh, in the movie, it's very like, it's just a conversation between the two of them for 90 minutes or whatever. So there is a lot of meta and saying the self-conscious stuff out loud. You know, like uh, Jonah Hill is saying, you know, maybe this is a stupid idea for a movie. He doesn't say this exactly, but he says, like, the implication is, like, I've done Wolf of Wall Street and uh, I had a directorial debut a couple years ago with the mid 90s. I've been had critical success and now I'm kind of scared of messing up and so I feel passionate about this idea of putting my therapist's ideas out there because I think it would help people but there's this self-doubt voice saying like yeah basically like this is cringe or like this isn't what you should be doing you should be doing something that gets you an Oscar this is actually kind of lame and might not be a success. This might be a total vanity project. Vanity projects are bad. That's like his self-doubt. And this therapist, you know, is talking to him and saying, basically encouraging him that like, we're making this movie together and there's a possibility that it will be bad. There's a high possibility that it will be bad. There's a 100% possibility that it won't meet your mark of perfection. It's not going to be perfect. So like, let's just do a really good job and just accept that, yeah, it's going to be bad. It's going to fail in some ways. Everything fails in some ways. And, you know, let's not let that stop us. And so that was sort of coming to mind just now when I was saying, oh, maybe it's, uh, <laughs> neurotic and lame to talk to yourself for an hour and instead I can think it is neurotic and it is lame <laughs> it's like TMI it's cringe yeah that's all true it's not if it is it is. I don't have to think, oh, what if it's this? I already know that it is those things. And the value of it is still worth it to me for like seeing following through on the idea is still worth it to me being open to the idea that maybe 
Although, uh, when I was being a Twitch streamer for a while back there, I don't know about, I don't know if I stand by that work. Like, being open to that is a better place to be for, like, yourself emotionally and yourself as an artist. And, like, not even trying things or pre-censoring yourself. think I'm perfect Wolf of Wall Street guy and so if I make a misstep uh, you know they'll find out that I'm actually not a genius I'm a fake anyways I got a therapist suggestion from a friend so I reached her out waiting to hear back and I hope that works out I was thinking my therapist that I like so much who's not practicing right now she was recommended from a friend and I think that probably made me trust her more easily or like put more faith in her because I felt like well my friend who recommended her knows me really well so he says she's good she must be good whereas you know when you're meeting someone that you just found on google or whatever you're sort of like let's see let's see how this goes Her dad passed away, and she says this therapist has been helpful and gives her a lot of like writing exercises to do sort of like yeah, self therapy in a way, learning about yourself, unlocking yourself, and yeah, hopefully she has room in her schedule. I think she sounds good. Something like that. God, this dance is coming out so good. Oh my god. Right? I mean, that's a dog. You have to admit, that's a dog. Wow. Okay, once again, let me know what you thought about this pre-filmed show. And if and when I do another pre-filmed, what do you think I should do? What worked? What things do you think could be done differently? What things do you think could be added? Listen for that one. What else we got? What did that was well, folks, getting close to the end of the hour. I just want to say it's been amazing. Thank you guys. What if I? What? If, I would like to try talking like that for an hour. What if I talked in character? I think it is valuable to say, hey guys, you see me on 
social media, and I'm posting hot selfies and stuff, but turns out I'm actually depressed, yup. Of course, that has its value, that has its place. But could be fun, could be fun to do the whole thing in character. I guess kind of like a, kind of like a Bob Ross, just like a calm, a Krista Tippett. This is Krista Tippett, and this is On Being. <laughs> I hate On Being. <laughs> Don't tell anyone, but I hate On Being. Sorry, God, I hate Bob Ross. Thank you. 